All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We've got Rainer in the bottom left of the ESL EU finals, cleaving his way to the grand finals and rushing for the purple gas that he loves so much up against Skillis. Skillis for Team Liquid. What a run he has had today. Some of the most epic games I've seen in a while. Um, really cool games. <laughs> Beating some of the best in the region and getting into the grand finals is, of course, a great surprise. It's also kind of cool because, in general, um, it's been a year of Max, Max, and Clem every week in the finals. And, and this time around, well, what do we see? It's not Max, Max, and Clem because Clem's in Korea. And even Max, Max has fallen by the wayside in this tournament, which is very cool. Now, with Rainer's build, he doesn't take this purple gas straight away, even though it's double mining, because he does want to get his ling speed pretty quickly. Now, interestingly, he's pulled off gas here. So he's actually delayed the ling speed starting a fair bit. But Skillis doesn't know that, right? He, he probably assumes Link Speed started. Um, he did see the spawning pool finish, but I think I think he probably saw when Rainer was still in gas. Now, Link Speed only starting now, which means it's going to finish about 345. What is good about defending this base is you've got this ramp in front, so once you get a queen on the ledge, the adept, you know, to walk up that high ground is just instantly taking hits from the queen, which is why you've got to kind of shade from quite far away, and if you do want to commit to it, Rainer's there waiting for you. He's going to block. Oh my god, a four Link surround? Are you kidding me? Guys, surrounding an adapt with four Zerglings is... Pff, that's hard, man. <laughs> that's a brilliant start. I, I, I'm like, I don't even know. That's that's one of those things where you just throw like a scrunched up paper over your shoulder and it friggin' somehow lands in the garbage bin even though you weren't even aiming for it, you know? All right, what do we got, guys? Second gateway wall off. He misplaced his buildings, I think. I don't think this was the, the right way, but he didn't want to replace his cyber core after he misclicked it. Sporkwiller goes down to save that drone. Another drone comes out. Nice pick off for Skilly Skill. Going to group up at the front. And those Zerglings going to take some damage, but Rainer does pull back quite fast. Third hatchery is on the way. No Sporkwiller in the main just yet. It's 335. Looks like he's going to rely on the double queen defense as these two adapts shade forwards. They could commit. It's a bit dangerous. You know you're, you're going to be losing them. You want to get at least two. Oh, great Spore Trick. Another Spore Trick. He only got two drones, guys. The Oracle's going to come in and get one, two more. But, oh, he gets one more with the Adepts as well, which is not too bad. And Shade's an Adept out, actually. So very well handled by Skillis, who's now up 10 workers. Of course, Rainer is holding that drone key down, so that'll be good. Now, you guys might be wondering, why do they say, oh, it's only one worker or whatever? It's because he'd already killed the worker over here. And that was actually the, the thing that popped this number on the left up to two. So just explaining to her how, how this thing works. If, if another worker dies within like 15, 20 seconds, it'll kind of pair them together as one batch of worker kills, essentially because it's like time time kind of constrained, right? To try and show damage in that period. Twilight Council has started up as well as a third and fourth gas. No forge just yet. Are we going to see a forge or a third and a fourth gateway? This is the question because Roach Ravager walk across the map with the Queens. Queen walk with Roach Ravager Ling. So common on this map. The oracles are so damaged. This is a real problem. This oracle taking this much damage means we, we kind of have lost a bit of that potential. Forge, third and fourth gateway both go down just before five minutes. Another oracle comes in immediately. Okay, where is that? Stargate rally. This is bad, guys. This is a this is a good learning moment. Skillis, usually a player who doesn't make this mistake. Rallying your Stargate into the opponent's base. Anytime you guys say, say you say you have a drop on your side of the map and you, you want to tell it to go on load in the main, tell it to just move here. And then when it gets there, grab it and tell it to go in. But if you tell something to go into your opponent's territory 30 seconds ahead of time, in this case, if you start an oracle, it's going to be, okay, wait 30 seconds for the oracle to build, then move it in. Unfortunately, another oracle does fly into the queens and get taken out. You're just not going to be, it's so hard to keep track of the timing. Like pros are good at keeping track of, oh, this is going to happen in 10 seconds, 20 seconds. If it's 30 seconds or a minute out, there's no way that's still going to be at the top of your priority list. And you're going to remember to grab that oracle and micro it the moment it comes in. If you're not looking for even two seconds, queens are there, spores there, bam, it's dead. So it's it's kind of like a good little rule that you can apply. Now, five more drones did go down. Rainer is not going all in. He's taking a fourth hatchery plus one range. Sixth gas goes down. Well, I say sixth gas. Sorry. Second. That's That counts as two. So we're on four gases effectively with that one. Fifth and sixth gas should go down because with plus one range, that tells you he wants to play Roach Hydra Lurker. Or knowing Rainer, he won't build a single Roach, right? He doesn't even have a Roach Horn. Yeah, he, he likes to play Hydra Ling Lurker. Put all of his gas into the Lurkers. It's not a bad style. I kind of like it. Oh, does pull the drones away. Good reaction by Rainer. Very nicely done. But, uh... What's Skillis doing? Pure gateway man right now. Six gate stalker. No robo just yet. Interesting. Templar archives, was it? 
Templar Archives and Robo. Now, this looks like it's probably just going to be an Immortal Storm transition. It could just be a Prism, an Observer. But if you go too heavy on Stalkers, you're very weak to the Lurker transition of Rainer. So that's something you got to be careful of. Stalkers blinking back nicely. A couple of Adepts go down, but plenty of Zerglings do as well. The Adept is, does, of course, shade into the Worker line. It does fall down there. Oracle's clearing the creep in the middle. Very important on this map. There's already creep beyond this, up on the far left of the flank. And that's going to be kind of scary. Don't get surrounded here, Skillis. Gets himself a queen. That's nice. Good micro, dude. Yeah, just good micro. And, and more importantly, I would say good confidence moving so far forward here as he just continues to pick off more and more units. Hydras are now out along with these queens. So those stalkers, ah, a little bit of a derpy blink. One stalker does go down, but one stalker for that many hydras, lings, and queens. Oh, man. Skill is getting a lot of damage done. Two to one, even better than two to one trading. Revelation comes down for the oracles. Hydras in the open. You don't want to be losing these hydras, but... We're going deep in the enemy territory. Skillis could lose the Oracles if he stays too long. If the Ling Flood comes out, it could turn this fight in the favor of Rainer. Skillis getting great value, but he doesn't want to overcommit. Remember, Stalkers are incredibly valuable. He does not have Science Storm, no Immortals, nothing else. Fourth base is on the way for him, but he's still only on six gates. Charge is on the way, and it is very much a Gateway Man style, but it's a single Forge. There's no second Forge. The first Forge has stopped spinning as well. I like that he clears the creep up on the left. He kind of puts Rainer back in the naughty corner of Zerg. And Rainer's hive did not start during all of that. Rainer is down seven workers. His hives just started. And uh, I think we see that, you know, if you have a few ravages against that, it can be nice to help with some biles, especially from the high ground. But it's also very expensive. And, and ravages, 100 gas each, and they're, you know, kind of vulnerable. I know why Rainer likes to go straight Hydra Ling because it is a little more efficient at getting past this Stalker stage, but nonetheless, he takes some damage. Now, four High Templar are warping in, guys. Going to be gathering Storm Energy. A Storm's on the way. Plus two did start on the Forge. Two more Gateways as well is going to take us up to eight Gateways. Make that nine, ten Gateways. So, Skillis getting the Gateway count growing. He does need a few more Pylons, and he starts those as the Zealot Drop comes into the main base. Stalker's on the front going to be distracting. High Templar a bit too far forward. Skillis, oh, this move out was a bit drunk. A little bit too far forward, and those Archons are going to get taken down. That is very expensive. Now, Charge finally finishes. He does get five drones on the main, but five drones and a bit of mining time for losing all of those High Templar. Remember, it's not just losing the Archon value. You just lost your High Templar that are meant to be gathering Storm Energy. Skillis is ahead in this game, and I think he's kind of falling into the trap of... He doesn't want to let the lead slip away. He's, he's killing it right now. He's in a good spot. But he just lost all of his splash damage. He hasn't remade too many of them. Only two High Templar gathering energy. Man, he's getting good trades, though. <laughs> Outside of the initial Archons going down, he's denying mining in the main. Now the third base. I'd like to see that Prism get out of there. But Skillis, he's not watching. Will the Hydras get it? No, he escapes. Nice moves. Second Robo's on the way as well. I love to see it. Still, four High Templar now have warped in. Fifth one. He's got some cannons on the front. He's keeping Rainer in that naughty corner we talked about. The, the no creep spread Zerg, right? This is where Solar is comfortable playing Zerg versus Terran, for instance. But I think in general, you, you really don't want to be in this no no creep spread in the middle, your base under siege corner. That being said, Lurkers with Ranger about to kick in. Second Robo is almost there. Fifth base comes in for Skillis. Very nice. He's got his purple gas mining. He's on 73 workers. I like that he's not playing the craziest work account. I think sometimes we do see Protoss players go a bit too wild on the workers up to 90, 95 and just not have quite as much supply for their army, but I feel like his army supply is going to be great. Now, third Robo coming in, I, 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 or sorry, Fleet Beacon coming in, um, is going to allow the air transition. Oh my god, the Lurkers are on hold fire! The Lurkers are on hold fire? Oh my god. Did, 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 did Skillis see it? No, his observer's too far away. He doesn't realize that he's right there. Oh, Rainer's being a tricky boy, guys. Rainer's hunt highlight hunting. Rainer, Rainer's like up against the fence, and he's like, look, if there's ever a time to highlight hunt, this is it. Please move, and he wants the High Templar to move in. If the High Templar move in, and his first volley, when he turns these guys off hold fire and lets them reveal himself, is, is hitting the High Templar, it's going to be massive. Now, Skillis is kind of being a little bit more, I don't know if pedantic's the right word, I think careful, careful is, is probably a better word. Oh my god, those Lurkers are there. Oh, one Lurker starts shooting. Oh, Observer comes in! Okay, the Lurkers, oh my god, the Lurkers all turn on their shots, but they don't really get that big value surprise that he was looking for, so so unfortunate there for Rainer that that one Observer came in from the right and did help out. Looks like Lurkers do get Stasis trapped as well. Now, I think the Prism went down, guys, because, yeah, we've got a new Prism here. We see a pack of Hydras right near where that Prism was. Uh, I don't know if Rainer realized the Prism died, though. Sometimes if the Prism flies into your Hydras, you think there's a full Prism down here somewhere. 
and you leave a lot of supply. But he's bringing his hydras back to the front now. It is Rainer. He's got some lurkers turtling up. Mama's on the way. Mama is three quarters of the way done, but this base on the right side looks like it's very exposed and very likely for that one to go down. I'd like to see those probes run away. Ling's trying to run in the natural. I love the zealot warp in there. Meanwhile, these guys are going to come in on the flank. Nice counterattack move here for Skillis. He's got to be careful to not get surrounded, though. Where are his higher Templar? Just in the back there. Now, 16 probes go down. He did not run the probes away. Big mistake there, I would say, for Skillis. Does start losing this army. Battery Overcharge comes in, but his army's taking a lot of damage, and I think he thought he could split and maybe threaten to surround this, but because this other army on the left is, is backed out and kind of become afraid and is, is now turning around, he's kind of filtering through a choke point here on that left side. Zealots on the right are doing okay, but he's got to get on top with his immortals. The High Templar, the High Templar, the High Templar taking big damage. Storms do land on the front line of Lurkers, but there's so many more behind that. Luckily, though, no Overseer here. So he can save the base. Nice move. A couple Lurkers do go down. Mama Cloak coming in at the perfect time. Rainer needs to make Overseers. You can see right now, guys, he's only got one. Only one Overseer is a bit of a travesty. You need more. Otherwise, that Mothership Cloak represents way too much threat. Now, five probes being rebuilt at a time. Skillis needs to resaturate these bases, get back up to 70 plus probes. No ship weapons upgrades at all. So this is a full ground plus Mama Core. Or not even Mama Core, just Mothership style. I love this style. I've always said for a long time, if you've got momentum, best way to finish it, pure ground. Rainer, his army sucks, guys. He's got 13 Lurkers. He will have 16 soon. But what else does he have? 11 Hydras, 28 Zerglings. His army is so fragile to Storm, Immortal. And don't get me wrong, he's got a good Lurker count. He can win, but it's a positioning-based battle. Whoever has the better positioning can absolutely crush in this game. A few cannons over there. Rainer is going to try and siege this gas. And I think that's a pretty high value target, right? Mama goes in the main. Are we actually... I don't think we're willing to commit, though. This is one of these weird situations where Skills is like, well, I could recall here, but I... Oh, this Lurker's ready as well. He definitely shouldn't. He doesn't have the numbers for it. Mama's going to be like, okay, I guess I'm fighting a queen here. Oh, he's going to recall. There's Lurkers nearby. The Lurkers are hiding. But wait, the Lurkers are running away now. Rainer is pushing on the front at the same time. Rainer's army not really moving forward. He's just sieging. He does get 11, 12 probes from the low ground, though. Okay, Skillis goes forward. Skillis has got to pull back right now. Skillis, he doesn't have detection up there. Those Lurkers are defending well. He could take out the Hive from this angle, though. Meanwhile, this Lurker position denying the probes on that middle base. Skillis, I, I feel like if Skillis pulled the probes off the far right in this middle base, he'd be in a much better position. That being said, Zealot Runby comes in from that left side. He gets big damage. Lurkers are still there. Hive has not gone down. He's got to kill that Hive. Those Immortals need to click on it. Hydra's coming forward to try and damage, and it looks like this Northern base is going to go down at the same time. The Zealots in the natural, but they're not being micro. There's so much going on right now and we're gonna recall out these zealots need to get in there they are gonna get in there they'll get a bit of damage but coming in after the chaos is kind of settled these hydras will be able to deal with it meanwhile zealots hitting the middle base as well they'll get a few hydras but then they will go down and these trades are good enough i think for rainer as, as he keeps up a decent economy denies two bases of mining even though this base isn't dead he, he loses the base of mining and that's the big part and right now, what do we have? Six Immortals, Six High Templar. Oracle's trying to gun down the Lurkers, but you can see that's a slow process. Something which is not going to work out just yet. Lurker Hydra on the right. If he gets this base on the right, it's game over. Rain is going to dive in on that base on the right. A lot of interactions over a very long period. And, I mean, Skillis has played a good game. He clears out the army on the left, but he's one step behind. And Rainer says, happy to pay that price. I will lose that army on the left. I don't care. I'm happy with it. Oh, these lurkers are even killing so much. He's going to kill most of this army. Those lurkers. Those three lurkers. Oh, they do so much damage. Finally, we have some detection come in with the Oracle Revelation. But at what cost? He's already lost so much. The Hydra Lurker on the right side starts to thrust through. The Robos are exposed. The Fleet Beak and the Templar Archives. And this has been a fantastic, scrappy game from behind for Raynor. Raynor did fall behind earlier on. He fought back, though, and I tell you, he is so good in these scrappy Hydraling Lurker games. It really feels like he often has to play from behind and dig himself out of trouble. That's kind of Rainer's EVP in a nutshell, isn't it? It's, it's, oh god, I'm behind, how do I fight back? But I think we saw Skillis, if there was uh, a few moments, I think that that first move forward with the High Templar has to be the most important moment. I think this was it? No, it was even earlier than this, wasn't it? It was the first, it was this move here. This move here was really bad, and I think this is where Skillis lost the game, because he's got a Zealot drop going in, which is fantastic, and he was kind of just in the mindset of, I'm ahead, I'm going to start bullying you, which is the correct call, right? You get your own fourth base up, you're going to take a fifth base behind this, you're adding upgrades, Storm, you're growing your gateway count. I mean, this is just a perfect setup, right? But he kind of got in the mindset of, ha, you're busy responding to my prism, 
therefore I can shove in the front. And what he didn't realize is, well, his front army kind of stumbled into enemy territory before the Zealot Prism hit. So he kind of mistimed his punches. He thought this was the lead jab that was going to distract. And then these guys could come in and like, you know, do some stuff. These guys stumbled into the enemy army first, get jumped on. And losing all those High Templar is really big because remember, those guys were going to get Storm in the next 15 seconds. If he has Storm really soon, can you guys imagine? Look at this position. If at nine minutes, Lurkadens just finished, no Lurkers on the map, how do you deal with Psy Storm Stalker on the front with just Hydra Ling? You can defend as Rainer technically, but you need perfect spreads. You need perfect Storm Dodges. It's going to take all your attention. You simply can't do that while defending Zealot Prism, hitting your main and third base at the same time. It's not going to work. You will get overrun. So this was the moment where Skillis losing those High Templar, this bought Rainer just enough time to basically start his Lurker upgrades now that his Hive is done, get a few Lurkers out, defend the middle, and that's what stabilized him in this game. Really good hold, and that catch there for Rainer, well done. All right, all right, all right. Let's go, Rainer, with a nice comeback in game one. I got to say, though, you could tell the crispness of Skillis' builds is really getting there. And I don't really see Skillis as being the ultimate clutch guy, um, but he's a hard worker who grinds like a mother trucker. And I feel like, honestly, I actually think Skillis might be one of these guys where he's so good and he's getting so good. And I think people are starting to take notice. But part of me almost wonders as well, like, is his skill set actually even better for like a slightly slower pace of RTS? Like, I kind of feel like when I watch Skillis, like he would actually be a very top tier AoE 4 player. Maybe not AoE 2, because AoE 2 gets kind of multitasking heavy. Um, but I think like Stormgate as well, something with a bit slower pace to the fights, because I think Skillis has got just really good organization. And I feel like when he plays against a guy like Rainer, it is kind of like, Rainer's ability to multitask three places at once and just like out position him slightly is where Rainer has the edge. But Skillis is like, I think a little more organized with his build. Just like little details, little, little, you know, tight adjustments to get ahead here and there. And, uh, and he still has some flair, you know, it, it, to be at this level, you're still a very fast player. I think there's just this like degrees of magnitude speed thing when you're looking at a guy like Rainer or Clem where they can make their opponents look a little slower comparatively just because they're so incredibly fast. And I mean, it, it, just to put this in perspective, because um, this is no shade on Skillis, I've watched games on Serral's stream when he's played Clem on ladder and, and, and in tournaments quite a lot of times where Clem makes Serral look geriatric. Um, and that that's such a silly, obscene statement because Serral is one of like the fastest players of all time and, and up to 20, like 2018, he was just faster than everyone, right? And better than everyone mechanically, <laughs> just straight up at the micro. But I really feel like you look at like Serral versus Clem and it's like, there's points where you're like watching his first person view on his stream when they're playing ladder games and you're like, oh, he can't like keep up with Clem's crazy pace. Like he has to, he has to do clever things to put Clem on the back foot because if, if he tr if he gets stuck being defensive like he just like it's it's and, and to be fair maybe that's something to do with Terran versus Zerg and in general it's harder to defend than attack but I don't know it's just it's just such a crazy example to me because I do think like that Clem Rainer speed level is just a, a different sort of thing to everyone else but Starcraft is a game of many attributes isn't it you can be fast doesn't mean you're gonna win there are always ways to create a symmetry and use your strengths and leverage them over your opponent's weaknesses. So, uh, for Skillis, I think, honestly, game plan last game was pretty damn good. You know, keep it up. This map, though, it is um, it is a bigger map. It's a bit easier to defend here, I would say, from, like, it's almost easier to be a bit greedier as Skillis. Um, maybe you go for a faster fourth base, potentially. All right, guys, we got that second gateway there as well. Oracle's almost out. Pylon on the way, perfect. Man, I feel like Protoss players are so perfect with this opening these days. Like, even even I, when I do an Oracle Adept opening now, I never get supply blocked on 46 anymore, and it's it's just wild. I feel like for, like, quite a lot of years there, the 46 supply block was, like, basically compulsory. Like, you're not allowed to qualify for a Protoss license unless you get supply blocked on 46. I like that move, guys. The early Zerglings do actually snipe the pro, but no lings at home mean the adepts come in and get free damage. Unfortunately, free damage when you're dealing with Rainer's micro involves apparently only one drone kill because he's so bloody quick to react. Actually, great oracle movement, but worth it for Rainer. Yeah, he commits because the adepts were so damaged. He's only lost five zerglings for two adepts, guys. How good is that? How good is that? Fantastic start. Now, the third base has also been delayed about 20 seconds, and this is where you can get momentum. 
Oh, the second Oracle came across the map. He didn't leave it at home. You, you need to get over there right now. If you lose this third, you're in huge trouble. But I think these other Zerglings are a little too slow. Oracle gets pushed back by the Queen. Rainer forcing a multitasking situation. Remember, we said this is where his strengths lie against Skillis. But the Oracle comes back. The Adepts survive. This Oracle got, tried to go in, though. Skillis tried to dance with him. He tried to dive the Oracle while microing at home. And you can see the price he's paid for that. That's a deep orange Oracle, which is an Oracle that's now very weak. And look at how greedy Rain has been. He only has one Spore. No Spore in the main. He only, okay, so he has two spores, but only five queens. His sixth queen is only popping at five minutes. Because he, because he, this is what you have to do. And this is, oh, the oracle gets sniped. To, even though he's low on queens and spores, look at the defense. And you can see, guys, part of this, something which a lot of zergs, even at the top mess up, is they don't have this overlord. So that, look at, Rainer sees the oracle when it's there. So he has like four extra seconds to respond when he sees that oracle coming. And oh, he's going to get it. Oh, no, you're kidding me. Two oracles down. Two oracles down. This, These overlords on the edges, guys. Once you get your initial overlords, one here, these two here, to see the adept movement, you always have to fill in the edges to see the oracles coming. And he does it so well. And that's what's giving Rainer the heads up here. This is massive. This is absolutely massive. Uh, Evo chamber, lair, fourth hatchery. These are the things that are going to get him ahead. So how is he doing this, guys? No roach warren. He's going plus one range, straight into hydras. No roach warren. Um, he's, he's taken five gases at once, so he's played a rule of one gas, nothing but queens, zerglings, spores, and drones to this point. And, and Skillis is behind in drones. He's going to go plus one charge. He's going to go Templar Archives. Does Skillis hit a timing attack? I don't think he can. I don't think Skillis can hit a timing attack. Oracle comes in, finally gets itself a drone. And I think this is a reminder that Skillis wanted to dance with Rainer, but I think the moment you see the, the zerglings rushing to your third base and killing the adept, the first probe, the first adept... You, you should rally your second oracle at home. And and you might be wondering, well, why didn't he do that? Why not just play safe? Like, he's, he's she looked really good in the previous game. He looked really good in the previous game because he was so aggressive. And let me let me paint this picture for you. Oh, not again! Rainer's creep spread and his queen intercepts three oracle kills. So um, the, the pressure here is Rainer is one of the greediest players of all time. So Rainer, there is always, when you're playing him, a timer in the back of your mind saying, if I don't go do damage... He might be at 90 drones by seven minutes. And I'm not exaggerating. I've seen him against Harstam on this exact map early in this season. And I remember the previous game, Harstam was really greedy and like played a really sick macro game and beat him. So Rainer went to 90 drones by six minutes 30. It was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. And that's the thing, like Rainer, if he, if he holds that greed button down, he does it in a way which no other top Zerg would even risk doing. And the reason he feels safe doing it is, well, number one, he doesn't feel 100% safe. He's happy to gamble. But number two, even when his opponent does the counter build, if they don't execute perfectly, he will still micro his way into surviving and winning the game. Even in situations where on paper you'd say, oh yeah, if they hit this timing, that should be a free win because he's been too greedy, he'll just win anyway. Zergling sees it's High Templar Immortal. We know the Storm. No, 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 High Templar in the open. Immortal in the open, actually. Oh God, oh God, oh gosh. Battery's trying to help out. Warping in more High Templar. Oh my God. Oh no, 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 we can't lose. Okay, one High Templar goes down. Battery's out of energy. Battery's out of energy. Two High Templar down. He does not want to morph an Archon right now. Good pullback. Okay, so two High Templar go down. The Immortal survives because it's an Immortal. I don't know if you guys, are, you know, literally understand how words work, but that's why you've never surrounded an Immortal with Zerglings. You always think it's a good idea as a Zerg player, and then you very quickly realize, yeah, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> you're always like, free Immortal, yes! <laughs> and you're like, ah, it's not dying. Um, yeah, so basically, Skillis had to put more heavy pressure on this game because if you don't, Rainer's going to be too greedy. He just needed to be a little more reactive when he saw the early Zerglings coming across, pull his second Oracle home to defend and not keep trying to dive his Oracles because he let his Oracles take too much damage and then he felt even more eagerness to do a second round of damage, went too deep with his Oracles again, kept getting them caught by Queens. A little bit sloppy. He should have pulled back, joined his Oracles with his Adepts, cleared Creep, denied Rainer's map vision, but because he didn't deny the Creep properly, Rainer had so much Creep, so much vision, he was able to always catch Skillis out. Now, Skillis has gone 86 probes and a Fleet Beacon. He's going to go to Tempests, most likely, first to try and siege down the Lurkers. Problem, there's already a Lurker timing on this base, guys. Lurker range kicking in at 8.45! What in the hell? Guys, if someone hits me with 10 Lurkers, he's got two more morphing, with the range upgrade finished at 845, I just leave the game. No GG. You don't deserve a GG. Because if you're playing at my skill level and you have 10 Lurkers with, with range upgrade at that timing, you're, you're cheating. You're a pro gamer. You're making a YouTube video. I don't like it. I feel uncomfortable. It's unfair. You're too much better at the video game than I am. 
<laughs> You're way too good. This is a brutally fast lurker time. He breaks the cannon wall off there. The Immortal's trying to hang on, but oh, I don't think he can break down there unless he has some storms. Where is High Templar? They're too far out of position. This is crazy, man. Ooh. Here we go. All right, Zealot there. Prism up in the top. Ten probes going down. I mean, we did a bit of damage there, which is nice. Getting a, you know, a spine crawler pulling him home. It's just, we need these gases. We need this base. We can't lose control of this area, but it's a choke point. How do we break this? If we had a few disruptors, we could. Without disruptors, this is very difficult. Ah, uh, and it looks like Skillis is going to be getting overwhelmed here. I just, his units are stuck in the choke point. Battery overcharge comes in. The battery's a little bit too far back. So as he moves forward, he moves out of battery healing range. And you can see all those immortals going down. There's only two left. They start to do some good damage now. But even there, they are still taking damage. These are 10 range lurkers. Now they've got adaptive talents as well. Dude, the, the tail end of this fight is starting to turn in Skillis' favor. But there's more lurkers behind it. And even if you clear a bunch of these lurkers, is that going to be enough? Prism goes back in the main, pulls in, pulls out. Dude, Skillis is still alive. This might not be over. This might not be over. I mean, it's, it's still a disaster. Six roaches, 15 hydras, five lurkers, two more lurkers making... So much Hydraling. We don't have any Psy Storm to deal with the Hydraling right now. That's that, that's a problem in of itself. I wouldn't mind Rainer just rotating onto the other base. That might actually be the play, but he's deciding not to maintain the Siege position. These Lurkers are going to slowly Siege my opponent down. Clicks the Nexus, and he says that's going to be good enough for now. Two probes do go down. Mothership's on the way. Mm, I think Fleet Beacon was the wrong call. I think the Mothership transition is very good, but it's very expensive, and it doesn't bring you back into the game. It's a nice addition to carry momentum forward. When you're behind, Mothership doesn't do anything for you. That's Unless you happen to catch them with no overseers on the front, which is a bit of a gamble. I, I think that's something where when you're behind against a Lurker style, getting a few Disruptors actually is the play. This is something I've been, I've been kind of theory crafting for a long time, and I think it holds true. I'm not 100% sure, but pretty sure Skillist does get taken out. The reason is... When you're on the back foot and outnumbered, you need to have the range advantage to hold positions. Um, and whilst you can technically kind of do that with Storm, I think... So check this out. Like, 845, right? So we've invested... We're investing in Fleet Beacon. I think if we went Robo Bay, second Robo... We've already got the second Robo. I think we went Robo Bay. If you're fighting on this ramp and you don't have Disruptors, what can you do, guys? Because Disruptors allow you to just shoot from afar and pick off Lurkers and, and kind of like have that range advantage we were talking about. Now, obviously, the big problem is he got caught out of position, right? He, he was going across the map. And when he was got caught out, he needed to continue. I don't think he has a choice here. I think he has to basically like give up this base, just try to slow him down with Zealots and the Rally of Immortals. Try to buy time here. But I think he needed to counterattack, right? With this army. Because these guys, once you lose position, the High Templar have an effective range of about eight. The Immortals have six. Lurkers have ten. If he's already in range of your Nexus, now you're basically fighting into a siege position where he gets to pick where the fight happens, how the fight happens. It's just not a good angle. And uh, when you do want to break this, you kind of want to have three Immortals and a pack of Zealots coming from that side as well. But you can see Reyna had his Queens. He had Lurkers spread, so he was ready to defend both sides pretty darn well. Really nice play for Reyna here. Really good start. I think Skillis needed to defend the Zerglings a little bit better and just be a bit more careful with the Oracles on the counterattack. But Reyna got momentum and carried it. All right, all right, all right, guys. We got Rainer in the bottom left up to zero. He is on a tear right now, and he's going to go straight for the gold. It's been scouted. Skillis, show us what you got. I remember when people were going for this gold, like Dark was going for it early on in this map pool. And I remember very quickly, Hero started going two gate adept pressure and just getting miles ahead by like Dark finally mastered defending the gold mineral line and Hero would just shade in the main and kill like seven drones and just be so far ahead. And then the oracles would fly in and Dark would just be way behind. But then there was a certain game or two where Hero just got wrecked trying that build and he never did it again. But then also the Zerg stopped doing gold hatchery first on this map. And I'm just like, oh, oh damn. Like, is, does that not work? Is there, is there a cannon rush that works? Like, what's what's the play? What, what What's the whole thing here? Now, you might be wondering, why does Rainer do this? Isn't this an unnecessary risk? He's up 2-0, number one, guys. One of the best things you can do when you become a very high-level StarCraft player is going, oh, I'm ahead in the game or even in the series. I'm going to take even bigger risks. Or I'm going to push my lead a little bit further. And Rainer loves being in that situation. Remember, I told you guys, he's one of the greediest players of all time. He loves being in the situation where his opponent has to do something about it. 
Rainer loves being in that position where he's like, you better do something. You better make a place on, because it's that kind of reactive Zerg style where he can be like, okay, I'm going to see what you're doing. I'm going to react around it, shut that down, and then be miles ahead. And if he can do it, of course, that'd be great. I always find defending these gold bases, uh, it's very hard to get ahead off of it. But it's also a good launching pad for a queen walk later on. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, look at this. Adept goes immediately to the right. I love that he opened those minerals up. Skill us with the little details, man. But Rainer just casually runs his slings over, pulls back. Good Adept movement. And he's going to lose a little bit of hit points. No, only three hit points going down. Gets himself a Zergling. Not bad. Skillless is looking great. Nikita, a very good Protoss player. And I think he's going to be much safer with his Oracle Rally this game. Because he's gotten in trouble two games in a row by rallying his Oracles like too deep into enemy territory. So I think he I think he might just rally the Oracles to his third base this time and be a bit more on the preserving side. You know, we might see like the Showtime version of Skillis, right? Where you see Showtime, sometimes his Oracles kill like one drone. But that man doesn't get the let the paint get scratched, you know? It, you, you look at Showtime. You guys, you guys ever watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Basically, Showtime uses his oracles like uh, like Ferris's friend's dad, where it sits in the garage and you're not allowed to touch it and never drive it. And uh, and and Skillis has been been using these oracles like uh, Ferris uses the car, where he just does got not give a crap and he's like, we got to use it. We got to live life, man. We gotta we gotta go drive this bad boy around town. I don't care if it gets <laughs> I don't care if it gets bent out of shape a little bit. It'll be right. It'll be fine, bro. As you can see, he's being a bit more defensive this game. Loses a probe, gets a few circlings for it. That's fine. The Nexus didn't get delayed. So you can see he's kind of just trying to make sure he's rock solid on the D this time. Leaving the adapts at home. Yeah, so he's making sure Rainy doesn't get momentum. Problem, Rainy does have a gold base. There's a bit of pressure on us to find damage. That being said, six worker advantage. I think the scary thing is the queen walk. Like, I would not be surprised to see two gases and a roach warren go down. But no, melee's coming in. So no, there's no queen walk. There's no queen walk coming out of Rainer. Oracle's coming in the left side. I like the movement. Sneaky angle. Queens were on the wrong side. But his reaction time, Rainer is so good at pulling back those drones. This is one of those things, guys. When you when you see a top Zerg in this matchup, the difference maker is how quick they pull those drones away in this matchup. Oh, no, 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 no. Skillless shades out. Oracles are a little bit slow to save the day. And one of those Oracles is also very vulnerable. You can see those adepts all going down. And remember, if you lose the adepts and the oracles like that, it means the creep spread can keep spreading. The creep spread gives both aggressive potential to Rainer, but it also allows him to shut down your oracles harder. Roach Warren goes down. Rainer, the rare time where Rainer is actually going to play Ravager Ling Bane, a bit more of an older, more standard style, up against Blink into Forge. So we are seeing four gate Blink. This is Skillis taking safety precautions because he's worried about the Queen Walk. So that oracle flies in, sees the Queen's there. The creep spread is amazing for Rainer. But the work account's okay for Skillis. I wouldn't say he's in a bad position just yet. Gold base is annoying. Oh, another Oracle goes down. Oh, this is a problem, man. He's only got one Oracle now. Do you even... I, I feel like you kind of have to rebuild it. But if you rebuild it, that's all your gas, which you're slowing down Templar Archives. You're slowing down Robos. You know, you if you if you build another Oracle right now, it's so expensive, 150 gas to be spending. That slows down everything else. That's going to be shading back in a moment. No, they're not going to even shade back. They're just going to fight. Fair enough. I mean, they kill a few few Zergings there. That wasn't too bad. Ravages on the way. Wait, wait, wait. We're already making four Ravages of 47 drones. Wait, wait, wait. What? Oh my god, it's a 47 drone. One, two, three, four gas plus one melee Ravager Ling Queen timing? What? And he doesn't even hide it, guys. He just showed the Ravages. This is a crazy attack from, from Rainer. I have not seen this before. I mean, this is shocking. Stalker recall's really good. He's got a few batteries there. Cannons would be great. I think cannons would be amazing here. Even though Ravagers can bile them down, I think I think cannons just add so much damage, which Stalkers really lack damage output. And then the plus one melee means these lings are going to really lay out a lot of hurt. You've got to leave a unit in your wall. He's got a battery back there as well. Robo's on the way. He's trying to build another Oracle now, but the Queens are going to be here. Oracles ain't going to do much against this. They can kind of hold position away from the Queens to deal with the Zerglings, though. Oh, the Lynx coming in from behind could be an issue. Battery Overcharge has to get activated now because he's starting to lose Stalkers, though. Surround! He already killed, like, five Stalkers. The Oracle hold position is pretty good, but, dude, this attack is brutal. These warping in Stalkers are dying as they warp in. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful play here by Rainer. What a shocking... It's a seven-minute Ravager Ling Queen timing with plus one melee that I had no idea was coming, and I was casting the game. 
Like, how would you possibly scout this as skills? I don't think you can. I think you just need to, like, react really tight and micro well. And unfortunately, he lost a few oracles, uh, you know, uh, out there on the map. He, he lost uh, a little bit of the early momentum in terms of how the opening was going. The gold base gave a bonus. And I think he just needed to pull those stalkers back a bit quicker. That, that flanking surround with the zerglings gunning down the stalkers there. He got about four more stalkers killed there. And then stalkers warped in here and two or three of them died to ravages before they could finish warping in. I think it's all about keeping that count alive. Because remember, Rainer's economy is not good, guys. If you defend this third base, it's it's game over. And there's not that much Zerg left over, even though this fight went so badly for Skillis. It's all about those tiny details. And hats off to Rainer for just doing something that is shockingly surprising there. Um, he just stops droning at about five minutes 30, I guess, something like that, and starts building... Yeah, 10 roaches, I guess five minutes. Just after five minutes, he stops stops droning here, builds a ton of overlords off 74 supply, and he just says, no, nah, let's go for it. And, and I mean, Skillis hadn't seen the Evo chamber, so it'd be even better if Skillis had seen the evolution chamber. So he's like, oh, because normally if you see an early Evo, you think, okay, the Zerg's playing macro. So that's there's almost like an element of this where I'm like, I kind of wish Rainer built the Evo out here. <laughs> you know, build the Evo there... And, uh, and that might even sell the story even more, but nah, really hats off to him. Great tricky play for Rainer, and he gets himself a 3-0 crushing victory here in the EU Cup. Nonetheless, a great run for Skillis to get here, but uh, Rainer just a bit too fast for him in this matchup right now. GG, well played.